Okay. Who's ready for EDM that uses more notes than there are atoms in the universe? Anybody? Okay. Oh, yes. Cool. All right. Okay, awesome. So this is the new album that I've been making that's coming out because I haven't had almost any time to perform or write lately just between switching all kinds of things. So I wanted the emoticons to be the gimmick. Because I just thought of this idea and I was like, I guess nobody has ever done this before. So my fraternal community has nicknamed it Top Secret. So, of course, none of this footage can lead to the press until Abigail is released. So, let me first show you uh, the track title of the first song in the album. If I can figure out how this projector works. Okay, so... Uh, with each track title, what we have is the, the title of the tuning itself. Hopefully we can read that up there. That, uh, having the EDO after it, stands for equal division of the octave. So that means that this first track, instead of being in 12 equal divisions of the octave, is in 1200, which is a lot. And then each of the titles also has uh, 96,000 emoticon characters after it, which are in different patterns that I came up with, which, which are fun. And then um, I also, like, on purpose, uh, at various points in this, I, like, purposely just delete a few random chunks to, like, annoy the pattern seeking people or whatever. So there's all that. So this one is based on the pill sequence, and all of them have different ones. So I just wanted to show you that to sort of give you an idea of what's going on. And I think what I'll do is um, maybe I'll go through this PowerPoint a little bit, and then maybe we can listen to some of the music. And I'm almost um, more interested in user participation on this one, like, Maybe after the presentation with the PowerPoint, uh, y'all can kind of say like which one you want to hear, because I, I honestly equally want to show them all to you. Like I, you know, and they're, they're not all done yet, but most of them are. Okay, there we go. So, go ahead and begin with the top secret. So, this is an electronic album that lives entirely inside the computer, and it represents almost like a not really like satire or parody, but almost like absurdism, numerical absurdism. Uh, and the journey that I've taken to go through a lot of equal tunings and play in all of them and find the sounds I like, and then I was sort of like examining what I never do and figuring out what I could do to make that thing I never do really awesome. And one thing I never do is just use a lot of notes or use tuning systems in conflict with one another because I like to know what's going on. So this album is a manifestation of that desire to just have a bunch of crazy things happening. Uh, this is an album that is excessive for the sake of excess because we can, because we're using the computer. And no performer has to do this ever, so it's great. We can be as crazy as we want. So, numerically absurd, unusual, rare, polysystemic, or conceptually groundbreaking tunings are tunings that are probably not equal temperaments, or just intonation, or any temperaments in between, or they might have a gimmick or a quirk, like zero EDO. Uh, zero EDO would be zero tone, equal temperament. That just has one note that's an arbitrary reference pitch, and all of the notes are undefined. So, of course, you only get to use that one note. You don't even get to use octaves. Uh, the track in zero EDO is 21 minutes long, and uh, the track that features like 25 different equal temperaments, all of which are above 1500, are, uh, that track is like less than two minutes, so I, I thought that would be funny. Um, but anyway, extremely high number EDOs are one hallmark of this. Uh, some of this selection for that is based on what other people have used. Uh, like 1200 equal temperament, obviously, uh, are sent, so that's a good reason to use that. It lines up with 12 nicely. Tunings that use irrational and imaginary numbers, so we've got some pi, we've got some phi inbound constant, we've got some e, and they're divided in various ways. Uh, sometimes they are helpful in deriving uh, very, very strange tunings, and sometimes they function as values by themselves. Uh, so one of the tracks is pi equal divisions of five equal divisions of E. E as a ratio is a little bit bigger than an octave and a perfect fourth. And what the pi does is, you know, you split that into five, and then that fifth chunk gets split into 3.14. So that little 0.14 is a really nice microtone that's like 16 cents big. So, I play with that, of course. Um, and harmonic tuning is another one, uh, and this is sort of a tuning that doesn't really fall in any particular category, but it's kind of like a rip-off of the harmonic series. Um, let me go over to the board for a minute so I can do a little drawing. Oh, there's no marker. That's okay. Anyone know where marker is? No marker. Okay, cool. Ooh, you can toss it if you're feeling daring. <laughs> 
Getting closer and closer. <laughs> Okay, so how many of us have heard of the harmonic series? Yay, awesome. Apart from where it was last year. Okay, so with the harmonic series, if I were just drawing like note values, right? Um, I'm not going to draw the whole staff and everything. I'm just going to draw the pattern for you, and then it will make the enharmonic scale make sense. So if you have a single note, like uh, a fundamental, you know, let's say this is one over one. Like I don't even. How do you draw it here if there's no staff? I'm just going to draw this little thing. Just a chord note, whatever. Um, then, uh, if you keep using whole numbers and multiply the frequency that represents the pitch by that number, you get something that's an octave higher. And then if you keep going with the integers, what happens is you get notes that are close to what we have in 12-tone equal temperament. The 3 over 1 is very, very close to what we have. And the 2, of course, is theoretically perfect, since it's an equal division of the octave. 4 just gives you another octave. Multiplying anything by two in frequency ratio and gives you something an octave higher or lower. And then when we get to five, we have a pure major third, which is slightly lower than the one we use at 12 equal. And we can just kind of keep going. And what happens is, if you start from a fundamental and you keep using the scale, you get this situation where the notes appear to level off. I don't think they ever really do though, since it's a logarithm. I checked that once and it didn't make sense. But um, <laughs> anyway, that's how that goes. And you can just keep going. We don't get anything using 7 in 12 equal temperament. We get 8 because it's multiple of 2. 9 is multiple of 3, so we get that. 10 is multiple of 5. 11 is its own thing. So in the harmonic series, when you get new prime numbers, woo, new prime numbers that we didn't have before that aren't multiples of other ones. When you get new prime numbers, you get new stuff. And your possibilities increase exponentially. Now, the end harmonic series does something very interesting. Instead of having the harmonic series here, we change these adjacent intervals to be divisions of equal temperaments in descending. So, this first one, uh, obviously one tone equal temperament goes here. So this would be 1,200 cents big. Two tone equal temperament, it's just a tritone. So there's 600. Three tone equal temperament. You know, we get that too, so that's 400 cents, and then 300. And actually, a lot of these are things we could have from 12 tone equal temperament, right? We could just make this like C, C, F sharp, A sharp, uh, C sharp, right? And then, still, oh, I'm backwards, 200. It's, uh, you know, if this is one tone equal temperament, and this is two tone equal temperament, three, Four, five, no. Okay, so I got the five wrong. I skipped one and went to six. So he, here's the first one where we get something outside of 12 tone equal temperament. That's an adjacent interval, right? Nearly a quarter tone, but not quite. And then if we get up to six, we have something from 12 again. And you can see that as you go farther up in the notes, like in this area, you would get more stuff that's out of 12 tone equal temperament. So I thought this concept was so cool because it looks like the harmonic series, but the numbers are completely different. Um, and I actually adjust all of the intervals to be 5% flat uh, so that nothing sounds like it's from 12 tone equal temperament or almost nothing. But, yeah, anyway, that's the enharmonic series. Uh, Isn't that kind of cheating, adjusting everything to make it out of tune after you just came up with a system to, to, to determine all the, uh, all the frequencies? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Doug Blumeyer thinks about that. I think he's okay with it. I should have tuned. <laughs> okay, and then there's uh, there's ecosphere tuning. Um, this is a tuning that Jody Nagel came up with um, when he was here. That has to do with trigonometry. It has to do with groups of nine notes and how they're divided. And there's a very very interesting way to kind of like serially scatter these sine difference proportions. So I really want to use that scale. Uh, so we've been talking about that, and he doesn't have the original numbers, but I'm kind of like working on deriving it. So there's that. Um, a million and three limit ji. Uh, obviously, this is really absurd. Um, if we were to go back over there to that harmonic series and talk about the prime numbers, when you discuss uh, what limit something is in, in tuning terms, that is not a calculus term. It's just something that Harry Parch came up with that means, oh, uh, it's all the prime numbers we're using. So the 7 limit would have all the possibilities you can get from the harmonic series going up to the 7. The 11 limit, the 11. So, you know, the highest that people generally dare to go is like somewhere in the double digits. Uh, you know, they can claim those things in 53 limit and 67 limit. 
And that stuff is insanely hard to notice without just playing a big giant chord that has the harmonic series in it, which I think kind of makes for boring music, but that's just me. Um, so I just wanted to go really high and use a number that would be insane, because nobody would ever claim to notice a million and three limit just intonation locking and ringing like in a barbershop quartet. So that's another one I did. Oh, 12 tone equal temperament, our favorite. Um, it's not actually 12 tone equal temperament as we know it, though. It's 12 tone equal temperament where the octave size is changing to very, very absurd sizes and sliding around. So that's fun. I want to accompany that by like a visual of moving dots somehow on Max USB and make that work. Zero EDO, which we already discussed. No more needs to be said there. And tracks that use extreme amount of modes. Um, there's, I think, three that I know of. One of them uses all equal divisions of the three over one harmonic from five to 50. Um, one of them uses all of the moment of symmetry scales that have 11 notes. Um, and then I think one of them uses all of the ways to shuffle around three large steps and seven small steps, because you can write those in different orders. And yes, excess for its own sake is sort of the theme of this album. I already explained that earlier, but here's the PowerPoint slide, just in case I forgot to say it and then had to say it now. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm interested in doing, is creating things with lots and lots of groups that are kind of crazy. And also bringing up philosophical issues of tuning and what it means to be in a tuning and use a tuning, which is kind of taken for granted in, in tuning circles where people like using alternative tuning systems, uh, because people only use them in certain ways. Um, learning context between categories. So, in this album I was interested in doing this. This is not new for me. I do this all the time, but I wanted to do it in a very specific way. I wanted to do it with music that can either pay attention to microtones or not pay attention to microtones. So some music has pitches that are more still, and so you can kind of tell what the pitch is, and it's not wobbling by any given amount of sense at any given time. But maybe in opera, if somebody is vibrating like crazy, you can have like a whole like quarter tone of vibration, and it's fine. You know, because that's within the genre. So I wanted to create situations where the context of whether it's something is microtonally friendly or big and wide changes. So that was something I was interested in. Uh, oh, darn, that was the second one. Microtonality and macrotonality. Um, and then I also was interested in exploring the boundaries between detuning and synharmonics. Because sometimes uh, 12 tone music that's detuned a bit might not really sound that zenharmonic, only a little bit zenharmonic, and sometimes it really does. So I really enjoyed digging into that. Uh, I've also become fascinated with using extra tone in a DAW. So um, extra tone has to do with, like, if you take a drum sound and just play it really, really fast, you eventually get pitch out of it. So what I did was I have all these moments where, like, I'm imitating that using. I'm imitating other themes using drums that go really fast, or like I'm playing with the borderline between uh, extra tone and pitch to see what it sounds like, or having multiple versions going at the same time, and trying to kind of keep it within a steady beat. Um, so that is what I was doing for that. Uh, in fact, there's a really, really fine level of detail you can get in on where like you just have 128th notes and your tempo's really fast, and you can go in and just like kind of pick out individual notes and change some around and maybe like remove a chunk of three, and you get these really weird detailed sounds that are cool. Um, I also, of course, experimented with uh, structured forms versus purely composed forms. I like composing with form that maybe is like A, B, A prime, B prime, A double prime, B double prime, and maybe by the time you get to A double prime, it's very, very questionable whether it should be C, B, or A, or even A prime, and you don't even know. Uh, and of course, I also experimented with uh, free pitch and synharmonics. This is especially true in my album that uses a bunch of giant equal temperaments that are past 1500. Uh, it kind of sounds like a bunch of buzzing flies, which I'm fine with, and there's like a little bit of like punk drum stuff going. Um, and of course, accessibility and inaccessibility. So this is supposed to kind of be like EDM that's like bathed in something very unfamiliar. Um, so probably, honestly, I don't think I, I don't know, I, I always try to like marry these categories that don't go well together to try and appeal to a bunch of people, but usually it ends up successfully alienating everybody. So uh, I don't know what will happen this time, but I'm, it, you know, I'm definitely going to try and make it work. And of course, I also experimented with grooves and gestures. This has to do with uh, changing tempos, actually. I also, in addition to going in and getting little, little tiny notes to, to change pitch and fluctuate with that, um, 
I, I, there were also a lot of times where I was using like tempo tricks to suddenly change the tempo of something. Maybe you have a salient tempo element that doesn't change, and then a background tempo element does. Uh, so that, you know, when the salient tempo element goes away, you're left with this weird feeling where you've suddenly slowed down. That happens in the Ed Harmonic track. So, um, I'm doing that a lot, almost in every track. Maybe not every single one, but most of them. Uh, disconnects between perceived complexities. This has to do with the fact that, um, I might play something for you in 1200 EDO, and it doesn't sound complicated at all, even though there's an implied complexity in the name. So, I, I really like toying with the idea that, um, you know, somebody who's hearing this might think or read more complexity into it than it actually has. So, that's something that this album can use with these weird tuning names. But yeah. So, exploring what it means to truly use a tuning. This has to do with what counts as having used a tuning system or not. Do subsets of an equal temperament count? And do those subsets have to be equal temperaments themselves? Interesting question. If you're playing something on a piano and it's in straight old 12 EDO, and then you switch to the whole tone scale, are you briefly playing in 6 EDO and then going back into 12 EDO? Or were you playing in 12 EDO the whole time? This is kind of the, the question I'm getting at, because there are actually a lot of different things that being in a tuning system can mean. Maybe the creator has just declared it by pure fiat, which I did on the Googleplex EDO track, which is very impossible and silly. Um, but yeah, uh, this mostly has to do with that question. There's also situations where if you use an extremely large equal temperament, but only use a very small subset of the notes, maybe people think that it doesn't count as using the tuning, because you didn't use a majority of the notes. But, of course, where do we draw that line? Um, there's a really cool uh, song by Sevish called Desert Island Rain that uses 313 tone equal temperament. And that's the label that he puts on it. But he's only using a nine note scale. Uh, I think the nine note scale tempers out some difference between like 13 over 10 and some other ultra major third. Uh, it's really, really pleasant sounding the way he uses it. But of course, since he's only got nine notes there, you've got all these people saying, well, 13 tone <laughs> 313 tone equal temperament is misleading, but it's actually not because the tools were there and he used them. So uh, it's these questions that I think have been really fascinating me lately. Um, whether the tools used have to conform to a tuning uh, and what that means. Like, there's also that relicity piece, I don't remember what it is, um, that uses one EDO or it just uses that one note. I've been hearing people say that. I even did it as a composition exercise for Dr. Trewick. I don't know if that would count. Yeah, because it's one composition, right? Cool. Yeah, so maybe because he had the tool and the potentials to use 12 EDO, or because he conceived it in 12 EDO, it counts as being in 12 EDO? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if anybody does. We, we could argue about these questions all day. I'm sure we'd come up with some very interesting answers. And, you know, the intent of the creator, of course that matters a lot. Uh, it matters whether somebody conceives something in a tune. I always hear, I always hear talk of, well, if the creator conceived something into tuning and you changed it, then you've changed the intent of it. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. Um, it's kind of an interesting idea, though. Maybe some composers, if their music is retuned in something funny, actually, like, get upset. Um, I don't know. Um, there's another um, Japanese uh, YouTube musician, uh, H. Wakabayashi. And she writes these compositions where, like, she uses the whole piano to play, like, a hundred tone equal temperament. And it's so fun. She recently put out a video playing Satie's, um, Gymnopedis? Gymnopedis? I don't know how to say it. No. That, that one, that famous no. one. And she changed the melody to be from 48 EDO. Oh, boy. You should have seen the hubbub. It was, it was really not a good time. People were calling her all kinds of names, but I thought it was a great time. You know, we, we figured out something new about what it means to change the intent of the composition. Uh, or maybe people felt particularly jarred by that one. There's also situations where if you have a temperament system that the creator conceived something in and changes something that uses that temperament system but in a differently tuned way, then the intent is preserved. But I don't think things are so linear. Um, but anyway, just theories. Um, what about something that has potential to be used? Is this a yes or no question or a gradation? How much does this depend on the music itself? Uh, again, with the Googleplex EDO track, I'm really just using 100 EDO. Um, so who knows what a Googleplex is? Yeah, okay, so a Googleplex uh, comes from a Google. It's a very, very big number. Um, a Google is 10 to the 100. 
which means it has 100 zeros after it. And then a Googleplex is 10 to the Google. So a Googleplex is very, very big. There aren't a Google amount of atoms in the universe. So uh, a Googleplex, you know, obviously you can't use every note of that ever. You would just run out of time in the universe. But if you use 100 EDO, it's a subset, you know? So maybe I don't have the tools to use Googleplex EDO, and so it doesn't count, you know? Uh, I don't know. It, it's hard to say. Maybe some people will walk out of here feeling like I've misused the good name of Googleplex, and that's fine. Okay. And is it about whether we can tell or not? I think this has to do with what we perceive from the music and how we feel the tuning is being used. This might go back to uh, using free pitch and center harmonics and how those sort of relate to one another. Because I think there's a, a feeling that if things get free pitched enough, things might not sound like the harmonic enough. I don't know. Uh, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Okay. Strategies I use to obtain absurd numbers based on limitation. So these are just going over a few of these funny numbers and why I chose them. And then we'll listen to any of the tracks that you all want. Um, okay, so Googleplex EDO, of course, I just found a big, big number that everybody would know. I wanted to use tree 3, but uh, we don't know what it divides by. And Googleplex is easy because it divides by 10. So I just had to use 10, 100, 1,000. I didn't use 1,000. Don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then of course 1,200 EDO, cent sizes. That's pretty easy. 71, 72, 105, 106, 204, 205. This has to do with different sizes that various people have championed uh, for like an all-encompassing mode, like a, uh, a mode that could play anything. So 72 EDO is used by the Boston Microtonal Society. Uh, 106 EDO is used by Dolores Caterino, and it's 53 times 2, so very, very nice just intonation there. Uh, and 205 is the system that's used on Aaron Hunt's tonal plexus. So, uh, in this track, what I do is I just take an EDO and subtract it by one and orally demonstrate that with a chain in that different tuning, I can create a progression that sounds different from the one in the supposed all-encompassing mode. So, that's kind of what I'm up to in that one. And funnily enough, I, I noticed this after I was using 204 and 205, that 204 is actually a multiple of 12. And 205 EDO with Aaron Hunt's keyboard doesn't, doesn't account for that. I mean, obviously it's enough to play anything you want if you just break the chain, but still I thought that was kind of funny. Okay, then all these giant EDOs. So these are all on Joe Monza's website, past 1200 EDO, and they just have to do with various ways that people have measured musical intervals. Like, maybe if a number was more composite in this way or the other, it would be more perfect. So I just put a bunch of these in an Max NSP and changed the little number over and over to kind of like get a buzzing sound. So it's very, very fine. I even was talking to Joe Monza about this, and he said that the hardware might not be able to accurately convey things like in, well, 196,680 EO. And things like that. So, um, you know, maybe you're not getting the full effect of it, but, you know, nobody cares. Okay, <laughs> rank 11 tuning. Um, this has a really complex long name that is just a bunch of fractions. Um, and this is just an exercise with me trying to break the temperament finder. Because if you go on the temperament finder and try to find a temperament, the highest rank it will list is 11. By the way, it's really, really rare for people to use tunings that are above, like, rank 6. In fact, Tonescape breaks if you put in anything that's rank 7 or higher. So that was just me trying to do that. And then, of course, IEDO. Uh, dividing an octave into an imaginary number of parts, which has to do with taking the real frequency and the imaginary part of the frequency, and somehow turning it into a complex thing. I've been talking to a lot of people about this one because there are several conflicting theories about how it should be done. But I have come up with a successful way in Maximus P to parse it. Okay, great. So, does anybody have any questions before we start listening? Yes. Why? <laughs> because! Also, with the emojis, was there any sort of like rhyme or reason that you had to have all those emojis, or did you just kind of like close your eyes and... I just, I just wanted to do it. Um, and of course there's rhyme or reason to all of them. They all follow specific sequences that deviate in certain ways and they are constructed differently. So like with some of them, you have like a big, big wall of one emoticon and then like after you scroll down like 4,000 characters, it just changes to another one. So I like seeing those visuals as I scroll down. It's very fun. Um, I also realized that like as I was putting these into Bandcamp, 
that Bandcamp can handle 96,000 emoticon characters in a track title. So I, I don't know if it can handle more, but like that's as high as I want it to go without like things on my computer giving me the beach ball forever and stuff like that. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I, I just thought of that gimmick and I, I had to do it because I was like, huh, that just seems so fun. But yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. At what specific time did you become interested in microtality? Was there a specific piece you heard or a composer you heard? Or? Yeah, it's, um, well, it's difficult to say because I've always been interested in the concept, but I think things really took off for me when I met Aaron Hunt in 2015, and he introduced me to the Facebook groups. I had been listening to Gamelan music and Sevish's music online uh, before then, and those were really, really interesting and colorful, I think, so. Then I was... Uh, looking at more like choral music and stuff, like the Crystal Requiem, things that Jacob Barton writes and, and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got some time, yes. Um, you had mentioned, obviously most of this is EDO and equal temperament. You mentioned just intonation at one point. Did you ever use any like mean tone or any other ways of tuning? Or was it mainly just those two and like taking the extreme? Well, technically, yes, in the 1200 EDO track, mean tone seven is used because um, I start with a diatonic riff and then change things by a quarter tone. But if mean tone is used, it's highly incidental and not something I was thinking about in the vision when I was creating. Um, I don't really, I don't know if I really any use any other temperaments actually intentionally. Like I use a lot of other things, but I didn't like look up the names for all of them, and I wasn't concerned with like the just intonation they were approximating. Because who's got time? You have time for that if you're using one mode, but if you're using like 11 modes in one track and there are 21 tracks, yeah, not so much time. <laughs> Maybe someday someone will look them all up and get really obsessed with that. So, okay. So here are the tracks. I don't know if you can read those, but, and they aren't in actual order. Um, I'm going to rearrange them, but this is like the temporary order I have. So the ones that are not done are, well, Ecosphere hasn't been started, and 358 logarithmic to linear has not been started, 12 to equal temperament hasn't been started, um, and I think most of the other ones are there. Oh, and 24 equal divisions of the Feigenbaum constant has not been started, and IEDO. Well, we have the, the maximum SP thing for IEDO, so I kind of want to show you that. I was actually showing this to uh, Andrew earlier. Um, so, uh, with I equal divisions of the octave, the reference frequency that you pick matters. I haven't measured the cent values between any of these things at all, um, but this is what happens, I guess. So, yeah. And it's really, really weird because um, even with the different reference frequency that you pick, like, look what happens when you pick, like, 9,000. So some of these values are really, really variant, but because things never line up on the octave, I think I could just like keep going out in pitch class until I got frequencies that were close enough to each other. I don't know. Maybe I, I don't want to do that. Maybe it's the, the infinity of the thing feels a little bit like cheating. But yeah. Okay. Who's ready to hear some music? Okay. Does anyone have a particular track that they would like to hear? Oh, actually, the, um, the 71 EDO, 72 EDO track is also not done. My girlfriend's hair dryer. <laughs> oh no, that one's not done either. Oh. Ah, sorry, break, I keep breaking forgetting. my heart. <laughs> I know, right? I'm just in the uh, Google Play. Okay, let's take a listen. Okay, hopefully this is about right. <laughs> Thank you. 
But when she plays in the 100 E of piano, of course, there's a video, so you can just see exactly what she's doing. And the little lick that she's playing is so close to 12 EDO values. So I was like, oh. Um, so with that last part, uh, the little bass there, the little lick that's going, is a 5 EDO version of that. So I'm kind of like, sort of trying to incorporate a little bit of a detuning effect, but I don't know. It, it might be like, in some tracks it's like too subtle, and in others it's like too much. I don't know. It requires a lot of work, so. Okay, anyone have any others that they would like to hear? Yeah. I think the, um, the 12,000 12, EDO. Oh, yeah. Here. Okay. This is a long one. Oh, actually, let's not do the zero EDO, I just realized, since it's 21 minutes. And a lot of it is like an exercise. But it's, yeah. Okay, here we go. All 12 video. you were hearing that sound a little bit like crazy noisy cymbals, those are generated by stacking, uh, or by using a bunch of different intervals that have prime numbers of 6, so that they are not like in the factors of 1200 EDO, and then the tone rows that are being played as sine waves, or sawtooth waves that are polyrhythmic with everything, are generated from the factors of 1200 EDO, and they're layered in such a way that they're not like super discordant, but they're very out of place. I don't know, maybe they did sound too discordant. I don't know. But yeah, okay, cool, there's some more here. Um, let's see, ooh, I, I'm gonna make an executive decision. I really wanna show you this one. All equal divisions of the tri-tay, five through 50, including our very favorite, Bowen Pierce. Hello. Yes.
So in that part where um, you hear just like kind of these major chords that are suspended in place, what's happening is the first time that that happens, um, you're going in between different ED3s that have major chords in a nice spot, like shifting in between like uh, equal division of the tritape, like 15 and, and 22. Um, and shifting in between those to get a little bit different of an intonation. And there's like six that do it really well. So shifting in between those six. And then the second time it just does it way more. So that the detuning sounds way more uncomfortable. Like it's, like it's moving in between the notes instead of detuning the notes. Borderlines between detuning and zenharmonic phenomena. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is that with the main like beat of that that's going on, there's so much like microtonal voice leading happening in between the voices and I don't know what's going on. Basically each different hit of that is a different stacked chord from a different equal division of the tritape from 5 to 50, and they're the low ones. So I think 5 is included in like 7 and 9 and 8 and 12 and 11, uh, so yeah, that's where we are with that. Um, also, be on the lookout for um, long, long, long short rhythms. This is something I, I forgot to explain, that like almost all the rhythms in this album are kind of like based off of perversions of like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. But I'm chopping up the threes and twos into different values that are very close. Like this one features an 885, which you think is a 332 if you're not paying attention because it's only slightly unequal. And then what happens is I phase in in the eight uh, an actual 332 that belongs in that eight, and then in that five a 32. So you get like a different sense of what the 332 is supposed to be, hopefully. And that's it. Thank you everybody, that was fun.